Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi Okay, let us uh, start by uh, Umm al-Kitab. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. Let's go for the first case. You have 15 minutes between those of you to discuss. Okay. So, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Shahira and I will be the doctor for today. Uh, the patient is Hassan. I am Hassan. Yeah, I am Hassan. They will be the patient today. So, uh, Assalamualaikum, Mrs. Alaikum My name is Shahira. Okay. So, may I, may I ask what brings you here today? Uh, to my child. Uh, have, uh, after that. Uh, to breathe, apa? fast breathing. Last okay, so your child has fast breathing. For how long had he had that fast breathing? Uh, since eight o'clock last night. Since eight o'clock last night, and currently the time is ten. Okay. So, uh, may I ask, your child is it a girl or a boy? A boy. A boy. So how old is he? Uh, four months. Four months. Okay. What what is his name? Uh, Naim. Naim. Okay. So, uh, Naim had a feet breathing for at a, at eight o'clock last night. Yeah. So, okay. Does the rapid breathing develop suddenly or is it gradual? Uh, just came uh, to not out of nothing. Just suddenly breathes fast. I, I don't oh, know so it occurred suddenly. Brought to us clinic first. Oh, so you brought to the clinic. Uh, what was Naim doing at the time that he developed the rapid breathing? Uh, we were just uh, to uh, going to sleep uh, to after then uh, to uh, uh, just lying there then if I sleep time then suddenly rapid breathing. Uh, so, yeah, also of course. Can you raise uh, your volume, please? Okay, uh, boleh dengar ke? Yes. Okay. Uh, what's the question? So, uh, what was Naim doing at that time that he developed the rapid breathing? Ah, uh, uh, lying down. Just going to sleep. So he was lying down just uh in a he was just lying down, lying down and he developed the rapid breathing. Yeah. Uh what do you think caused that rapid breathing? Is there any exacerbating or do you think that rapid breathing has any relieving factor? Uh not sure. Because there's the uh, coughing a few days. So he had coughed for a few days before. How many days before actually? Uh, two days before uh, rapid breathing, I guess. So he had coughed two days prior to rapid breathing and rapid breathing at 8 o'clock the night before. Yeah. I'd like to ask a bit on the cough. Okay. What uh, does the cough occur suddenly or is it gradually? Uh, the just coughing occasionally uh, not all the time, but uh, it doesn't the doesn't becomes more often so just intermittently. 
so uh, cough just occurs intermittently. Do you think uh, that there is any pattern of the cough? I'm sorry. Uh, so it just occurs occasionally. Do you think that there is any exacerbating factor for the cough, such as when uh, the children was eating or when he was playing or it's just, just in random times? Mm, I don't know, random, I guess. And then do you think, uh, do you re notice any patterns to the cough, such as any, it sounds like fucking cough or any whooping or if the cough is prolonged? Mm, just a short cough, like, <coughs> but comes something. Uh, so it's just short time cough. Okay. Uh, does the cough, did you notice that uh, the cough, does the, sorry, does Naim had expectorated any hospital? Uh, yeah, uh, about small amount. Uh, just uh, small. Okay. Just small amount of the sputum. Okay, so uh, what, it, what is the color of the sputum? Uh, is it whitish? Uh, it's yellowish. It is yellowish. Did you notice any streaks of blood in the sputum? No. No, there's no. Uh, does uh, Naim had any post to see uh, any vomiting after he coughed? No, no, no vomiting. No vomiting. Uh, did you notice any change of voice in Naim's voice, such as no. it become hoarse? Uh, no, just becomes normal after that. Just okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So aside from the cough, did you uh notice that Naim has any other symptoms such as fever or? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to also a fever, but just warm. Since when did he have that fever? Uh, since he started coughing. So it is at the same time that he started coughing, he had yeah. the fever? Yeah. Have you had, uh, as for the fever, had you measured the temperature? Uh, just put uh, hands on the uh, forehead. Oh, so you just you put, uh, put just... The... Okay, so you just measure it by your hand, okay. Uh, okay. So, did you notice that Naim has any chills and rigo during uh, when he had that fever? Chills and rigo? Oh, shivering. Uh, no. Yes, I'm sorry, shivering. No, okay. Uh, did you give, uh, what did you do to relieve that fever? Did you give any medication or did you do tepid sponging? Uh, we just uh, put a, a, a wet towel on top of the forehead. Tepid okay. sponging. Okay. Does Naim had any fitting episode during the fever? Uh, no. No. No fitting episode. Okay. So other, other than uh, he had rapid breathing for one day and he had fever and cough. Other than that, uh, did Naim had any other presentation? Uh, yeah, the, no, the runniness. Runniness. Run for how long had he had that runniness? Um, to... The day before, uh, the day after coughing start. So the day after coughing start. So let to confirm just now. The coffee is two days, right? Yeah. For no. two days, and then he had a uh, runny nose after the day after. Okay. Can you describe uh, about the runny nose? Uh, can you describe a bit about the mucus? Is it uh, uh, the amount that came out? Is it a small amount or copious amount? Mm, small amount. Just uh, apa? Runny, clear, okay. clear from the nose. Sorry. We just wipe it off, then uh, to, so it's not obstruct the breathing. Okay, so it's just a small amount. Okay, so uh, okay, I would like to ask a bit. Since Naim had this presentation, did you notice that he had uh that he become drowsy, less active, or lethargic? Mm, yeah, we compared. To previous months, still a, a bit uh, less active. Previous but, months? Uh, yeah, but, but, uh, during the last this month, to compare to the less feeding, not not uh, playing around much. Okay, so he become uh, less active and also had less feeding. Naim yeah. is four months, so he is exclusively exclusively breastfeed. Yeah. 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 Okay. 
but uh, he had less feeding. Uh, he had reduced feeding. But is there time that he refused to feed? No, just uh, to, um, less crying for attention. But when feed, uh, to tries to put his mouth, uh, feed by small mouth, then stop. Okay, I see. Okay, so for aside from that, did you notice that Naim had any ear discharge? Ear discharge, no. Not Is there any change in the bowel habit such as uh, he had increased urination? No, no. Just did normal. you notice any rashes? Where? Uh, anywhere on him? Uh, no. None. No. Okay. So he had cough, right? So uh, did you notice that Naim had any night sweats sweating profusely during the night? Uh, no. Is no. there any contact with patient, uh, with TB patient? Mm, no. Okay, so had uh, Naim had any history of water and soil contact? Water and soil contact? No, just in the, she stays in the house. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, since Naim had fever, cough, uh, before he had rapid breathing, did you go to, did you seek any treatment such as going to the clinic or anything? No, so much because uh, it seems just coughing occasionally, no, apa, no, apa, no, the fever is mild too, so did, we didn't take much of it. Okay, so since he had this rapid breathing, did you notice that he had any nasal flaring? Uh, just Nasal flaring, like when uh, fast breathing faster, or uh, oh. did you notice that the his uh his nose, the his nose, his nose, uh, expanding, expanding, oh. Oh. Uh, when started rapid breathing. Okay, did you notice that he had any chest in drawing? Just in drawing, no. No. Okay. Uh, did you notice that he had any bluish discoloration of the lips during the episode mm. of no. the reading? No. no. Okay. So, I would like to ask a bit about the past history. Does Naim has any known underlying medical illness, such as eczema, allergy or nitis, or having any lung disease? No, no. None. Okay. Has he been hospitalized before? Yeah, uh, during uh, to after birth for a bit. Uh, after for, birth, yeah, for yellow, 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 uh, yellow, uh, jaundice, huh? yellow, jaundice. for jaundice. For how, uh, since it was uh, okay, for how many days was that? Uh, four days, I guess. And the uh, four days is what was the uh, management then for that? Uh, Management just uh, UV, I guess. Uh, lampu, blue light, blue light. Um, okay, so you was only under the blue light. All right. Okay, so uh, there's also one thing that I forgot to ask just now. Is this the first presentation? Uh, of what? Rapid breathing? Uh, is this, uh, yes, including all of this, rapid breathing, fever, cough. Is this the first time Naim had, had this presentation? Uh, yes, for him, yes. Okay. Okay. So, uh, does Naim has any known allergy? Uh, no, none. No. So, Naim is currently four months. So, is he vaccination is up to the schedule? Uh, yeah. Uh, last vaccination is uh, three months. At three months. Okay. Is there any complication post vaccination? Uh, none. None. All right. So, I would like to ask a bit about the birth history. So, do you do you, do you uh, have any underlying illness during the pregnancy, such as uh, having any problems during the pregnancy? During pregnancy, none. None, none. Okay. Uneventful. How about the daily? Yeah? Any bad food. Okay. So, uh, how about during the delivery? Uh, at 37 months. Uh, by seven. No, yeah, term. Okay, 37 weeks by normal, as week. 
ya nama delivery alright okay so postnatally he had jaundice right so yeah. he was hospitalized yeah alright ada danda is there any other complication hmm nan nan alright okay so uh how many siblings does nan have uh two elder sisters two elder siblings so he's the third alright yeah. uh including you your husband and even the siblings does any of any of you has any underlying disease such as asthma eczema uh, or allergy or like this no do you or your husband has any chronic illness such as diabetes hypertension mm. uh. no may i ask how old are you and your husband the uh, 22 and 27 like 22 and 27. 27 do both of you work ah uh, apa plant uh, housewife and planter uh, kebun okay so i'm sorry to ask but do any of you smoke no, no. okay so i would like to ask i want to ask a bit about your environment do you keep any pets at your house mm, no where do you live ah uh, jerantut jerant jerantut okay So that's quite far. Okay. Uh, is there an... okay? So, uh, is there any at your house around your house? Is there any exposure to dust or dust mites? No, it's no not much traffic. Okay. So I would like to briefly summarize. So Naim, the child is four months. So he had rapid breathing for one day at eight. o'clock last night but yeah. prior to that he had fever and cough for two days right yeah the cough was productive yeah okay and he also had runny nose one day prior need the device to see go to the patient Zahira yeah Zahira yes doctor you will uh, do summary for for me not for him okay okay sorry you need to do summary with me not with uh, with nasri okay so can you do summary for your case please for my case okay uh, so naim a four month old boy presented with rapid breathing for one day so it was associated with fever and productive cough for two days and runny nose for one day it was uh, there was also reduced oral intake and There's one thing that I forgot to ask. Sorry, is there any sick contact? Ah, uh, sister, the apa? There's a uh, coughing similar, the coughing fever the day before, but resolved ah uh, to three days ago. So, ah, uh, the sister had cough and fever. Ah, uh, since one since one week ago, then stop after three days ago. Then stop after three days ago. Okay. So only one sister is suffering that. Is there any other? Who uh, had no, the same that, symptom? The other siblings are okay. Me, uh, parents okay. No coughing. Okay. So the child is with you. Uh, is there any caretaker? No, uh, no, just taking care at home. One of them. Okay. Them. Okay. So I would like to redo my summary again. So Naim, a four-month-old boy, he presented with rapid breathing for one day for one day duration. He was associated with fever and productive cough of two days and runny nose for one day. There was reduced oral intake and there was also history of sick contact with the sister. Hello. Hello. I think that's all.
Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, doctor. I can't believe it looks like the line is interrupted. Can you do summary? Sorry. Summary, please. Okay, so summary. So Naeem, a four-month-old boy, presented with rapid breathing for one day. Uh, it was associated with fever and productive cough of two days and runny nose for one day. He had reduced oral intake and uh, there was history of sick contact with his sister. Any other positive points from the history? Please, uh, everyone need to mute his uh, microphone, please other than the one who is speaking. Yes, uh, Shahira. Uh, there was no family history of asthma, okay. family history of atopy, and this is the first presentation. Okay, so what's your uh, working diagnosis? So my working diagnosis is actually the first one is pneumonia because this patient had fever and he also had productive cough and fever, productive cough, raminos, rapid breathing. So that is my first provisional, uh, my first diagnosis. Then, however, my provisional is bronchiolitis firstly because of the age. He is four months. And, but however, uh, this patient had productive cough, so it is a negative point of the bronchiolitis. Anything else? Any other diagnosis? Uh, other diagnosis, I uh, think less likely, but it could be pulmonary TB because this patient had cough, but there is uh, no history of contact with TB patient and the cough is acute. It's not chronic, and there is no night sweats. And other than that, I would think of also croup, but also I think less likely because there is no absence of voice. But this patient had cough and fever. Other. Okay, let us go for diagnosis of. Uh... Uh, bronchiolitis. What is the causative organism? Uh, for bronchiolitis, the causative organism is by RSV, respiratory sensitive virus. Okay, how can you diagnose it as uh, an investigation? Uh, investigation to diagnose bronchiolitis, doctor. Yes. Okay. So, as for the bronchiolitis itself, it is clinical, but on investigation, what we can do is we can do a spirometry to look for the severity of the bronchiolitis itself, to look for the oxygen saturation, and other than that, we can do chest x ray to look for if there is any hyperinflation of the chest. And, hmm. Okay, any other investigation you can do for bronchiolitis? PCR, doctor, to confirm that the causing positive organism is RSV. Who is this? There is someone speaking. Why you are not all of you muting your microphone? I'm sorry, that I think it is from my house. Your side, okay, you are welcome, no problem. <laughs> we can negotiate with you. <laughs> so it is very uh, important to know that there is something known as RBB. What is the RBB? Respiratory panel. 
respiratory panel. It, it, just the same which you are doing the COVID or anyone, we are just doing nasal swab for RSV. It's very simple. We can do it for like influenza, for RSV, and sometimes you can make a big panel which you can give us about 30 virus and, uh, and some atypical bacteria. Okay. Uh, when did you suspect uh, atypical bacteria in, uh, in this age? Uh, I think it went from physical examination. It is pneumonia. What else? I'm sorry, I'm not sure about that. You can answer a typical pneumonia in the small babies. Anyone can answer or should I ask? Azika? Azika? For atypical, um, yes. this patient might have prolonged fever or prolonged fever, I think. So what is the difference between typical and the atypical then? Uh, okay, what is the organism do you know that it can be atypical? Mycoplasma pneumonia. Good, very good. Mycoplasma pneumonia, usually it, it will occur for the school age children or preschool. But there is one unique organism for the atypical for uh, early infants. Hemidia, yes. yes, this is a very important, not to miss chlamydia pneumonia, which usually came from the mother's side if the mother has chlamydia, okay? It appears within three months, if it's like that, early infancy. And there is an important point, which is the child usually got conjectivitis. Okay? Hello? Okay. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. So you must, uh, uh, at this small age, you must rule out the atypical. And you must know that the atypical has. Just x ray, which you need to read. Sometimes you will find the baby is very symptomatic and the reverse X-ray is not so bad. And sometimes the baby is not so symptomatic and the X-ray looks bad than the baby. Shahira need to answer that for me after, okay? Uh, so if you ask uh, Hamiza, what is the treatment of atypical microbe? Antibiotic. Sorry? Hello? Hello? Yes. 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 What is uh, the treatment of atypical? Antibiotic. Hello? Yes, of course. What type of antibiotic? Uh, which antibiotic you are going to give? Atypical. Uh, Microlite. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, why you didn't give yes. her a child? Yeah, that's why if you find any child usually in severe pneumonia until waiting for the lab result, we are in the pediatric protocol. You can find you are going to use like third generation cephalosporins and macrolide, like 
erythromycin, azithromycin, it is very important. Okay. Uh, let, uh, let us uh, ask the city is a tool. If you did chest X-ray now, how can you differentiate between different pathology by the chest X-ray? Uh, if it is pneumonia, then there will be a consolidation. Okay, consolidation can be also consolidation collapse. Can be what else? Can be any complication of the pneumonia. Can be paranemonia efficient. Okay, so, so pneumonia effusion. So we must suspect either the diagnosis itself or its complication. Okay, for bronchiolitis. Uh, not sure. Okay. Hyperinflation. Yeah, hyperinflation. But sometimes bronchiolitis also can cause the same characteristic of pneumonia. Even if you read your pediatric protocol, sometimes it can cause some like infiltration and even some consolidation collapse, which is not stringent. But the blood investigation will guide us. Is it severe bronchiolitis or maybe viral pneumonia? Okay. So, Hafifi, what is the difference between lobar and bronchopneumonia? Uh, sorry, the question is about the lobar and also the bronchopneumonia uh, in terms of how can you differentiate? Clinically or say? If I give you an open question, it's your chance to start. Okay, so basically the broken pneumonia is uh, um, usually on s -ray we can see generalized um, consolidation or infiltration on s -ray. But in our global pneumonia, we can uh, see usually in loba, loba consolidation. In, in one side, yes. Do you know what the, the organism that controls everyone? Loba or bronco? Uh, usually, the bronco pneumonia caused by the viral, and the loba pneumonia usually the bacteria. So, uh, in infant, um, can be uh, GBS or also chlamydia. If not infant, preschool? Preschool, uh, strep pneumo, strep pneumonia. Other organisms? So we need to revise uh, the organism, both lobar yeah, and the It's a stop virus. Yeah. Must rule out staff. Uh, okay, let's go for uh, the OSCE and the differential diagnosis part. Uh, sorry, Shahira. Shahira? Yes, Dr. Yes, Dr. Hello? It's very important for us. Uh, this is an important lesson for all of us. Uh, don't use close questions for an important point in the history. Like vaccination. Vaccination now, we are faced by some people who is trying to be uh, anti-vaccine. So if I ask you like you did, what about vaccination? Is it up to date or up to the schedule? Said yes, done already. Yes or no, I don't know unless the book is in my hands. But at the time, it's better to ask him open question. 
What about the vaccination? When is the last time did you give him the vaccination? Okay, so at that point you may catch the patient is regular. What about the BCG in your case? You are speaking about uh, TB. What about the BCG? Uh, is there any scar on its site or not? So it is very important to please uh, try to, to deal with the community uh, with a good concept set that we can uh, pick any deviation from normal easily, okay? So it's better to start by open and then go for closed after that. Thank you. Okay, now differential diagnosis by whom? Who will present the differential diagnosis? I need it. Um, for the differential diagnosis, uh, first uh, we suspect that the patient might have uh, pneumonia because uh, as mentioned, uh, the patient has got Hello. a can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Boleh, boleh dengar tapi macam ada background sound. Okay, okay go ahead and uh, let's... Uh, okay. Um, for the differential diagnosis, um, first, I uh, suspect pneumonia because patient have productive cough. Also, um, patient uh, also have fever, rapid breathing, and poor feeding. And uh, not to mention, patient also have history of sick contact. Um, however, uh, bronchiolitis can also be um, the differential because um, patient also presented with fever and runny nose, uh, and also rapid breathing. Um, However, because the productive cough are uh, more uh, towards pneumonia, so uh, it, uh, it stayed below pneumonia. Uh, other is upper respiratory infection, such as uh, pharyngitis, because the patient has liver uh, history of sick contact uh, and also runny nose. Uh, however, there's no productive eh, for um, points against because usually upper respiratory is caused by viral, so usually patient don't have cough and uh, there's no lymphadenopathy. Uh, other differential diagnosis can be crook uh, since patient have fever and uh, runny nose, uh, coriza, but uh, because the, the, the parent uh, did, not, uh, 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 did not mention that the patient have uh, barking cough, so it is point against and patient also don't have uh, stridor which are likely to uh, to diagnose uh, for group. Uh, other uh, differential can also be foreign body, foreign body inhalation because um, uh, foreign body inhalation can also cause cough and fever, uh, also poor feeding, but um, uh, it is against because uh, there's no history of vomiting and noisy, con uh, noisy breathing such as uh, strido. Uh, for pulmonary uh, other also can include this pulmonary TB because uh, there's a uh, history of poor feeding. However, uh, it is mentioned that there's no history of contact with TB patient. Uh, there's no uh, loss of weight and the fever and cough is an uh, acute setting uh, which is less likely to be pulmonary TB. Uh, we could also include pertussis because of the presence of cough. Uh, and rapid breathing with poor, poor feeding, but because of uh, it is mentioned there's no whooping cough and patient is um, sin uh, not sinus and the patient is uh, vaccinated, so it is less likely to be. That's all for the depression I was If you are doing full blood count, full blood count. Um, yeah, what is that? Or what is the finding? Yes. 
uh, our Kofu blood count, we usually look for the white cell count to identify whether there is an infection and we can look for the differential whether it is a uh, lymphocyte or neutrophil. If uh, rise in neutrophil, usually it is bacterial in origin. If it is neutrophil, most likely it is viral. Usually, besides the uh, history of uh, uh, vaccination, even or not, is very important. Okay, the issue is there is absolute lymphopenia. You will find the leukocytosis, but with about ninety percent and above, are lymphocytes. So, if you find that, take care, please, about that. Okay. Uh, of course, we must define the tough to acute and the chronic. So our differential diagnosis for acute cough is different from the chronic one. So the chronic one can be TB, can be uh, cystic fibrosis, another like uh, severe uh, persistent asthma. So you must be able to put in your differential diagnosis to divide into two areas, okay? Uh, okay, let's go for the OSCE. Alia. Um, hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, sorry. So, okay. Uh, so, for us, I have uh, prepared a first question. Question. brought by his parents to breathing for two days. So, uh, then what uh, for the history you would like to ask, uh, other than what shown in the picture, which is drawing. So, anyone would like, uh, would want to link here to us? Uh, to, uh, okay. Maybe I can try. Uh, we... uh -huh. Okay, so for uh, the differential diagnosis, so because this is an acute cases, so I would think of pneumonia because of present of fever and also uh, acute bronchitis and also due to foreign body inhalation because this is acute cases and toddler and also uh, maybe viral induced risk. So for further history, I would like to ask according to the diagnosis. So if it is the pneumonia, so we ask a uh, present of cough with a uh, sputum and then a uh, fever, uh, high grade fever and then any history of sick contact at home or even at the nursery where the patient is taking care of. And then so for acute bronchitis, also a history of uh, URTI and also a history of sick contact. And then for foreign body inhalation, Maybe could ask the parents of the patient any history of uh, witness uh, see the patient uh, any foreign body inhalation and then for viral induced risk apart from uh, the difficulty in breathing is there any cough or noisy breathing so for what are the signs of respiratory distress uh, so from cough is there any nasal pairing and then cyanosis uh, noisy breathing such as grunting or 
uh, grunting and then any use of accessory muscle, any intercostalization. Mm, yeah. What else? Uh, Takipnik. Okay, what else? Any resection in the costal or supraclavicular? Okay, better to start from the nose. What you can see in the nose? And it's a flaring. And? And noisy grunting. Grunting are very important. So if we start from up, <clears throat> it will be nasal flaring and the grunting if we come down. Was the care about cyanosis, which is the most serious one. Now for recession, either uh, supraclavicular, intercostal, subcostal, and the tachycardia is a, a very important. And then the vital signs, because if the, baby, the child has severe distress, we find now the heart rate also like that. Okay. So uh, I would like to ask someone question about uh, Zen. Yes, doctor. If you put your stethoscope on the chest of this child, can you tell me your findings? So um... he has pneumonia. Okay, so the findings of this patient would be um, uh, first uh, reduce uh, reduce a entry, and then there will be cause crepitation. Before that, we we spoke together. Before that, we must have a flow. So there is decrease air entry. Then after the air entry, before you jump into the added sounds, you will comment on. I am speaking about scaltation, the flow for scaltation. Oh, uh, sound? Yes, this is very important. A, B, don't forget A, B. So number one, number A is the air entry, B is the breast sound. What did you suspect the breast sound to be? Bronchial, Bronchial sound. Bronchial breathing. You must be able to differentiate it between the uh, different type of air entry, which is either alveolar or bronchial. And even if you come to the crevitation, you must be able to differentiate between different severities of or different type of crevitation. It is fine or moderate or like that, okay? But let's go for the second one, for the second question. Okay, so next are uh, the second question. One year old girl was presented to emergency department in view of high grade fever, productive cough, and rapid breathing for one day. Upon auscultation, generalized crepitation was heard. Test X ray revealed generalized patchy consolidation of both lungs. So, first one, what is your provisional diagnosis? The second one is what uh, the common etiology of based on your diagnosis and list the three investigation. Okay, uh, anyone would like to try? Um, I would, can I try? Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so uh, my provisional diagnosis according to this presentation is uh, bronchopneumonia because patient have high grade fever and then uh, the uh, patient have cough and rapid breathing. And also patient have generalized reputation and generalized patchy, con patchy consolidation. So that differentiate between bronchopneumonia and also lobar pneumonia. And then uh, the common etiology, uh, I believe we have discussed the etiology just now. So it is according to the age, right? So for newborns, uh, group B streptococcus, um, E. coli, and Klebsiella, and then uh, as Doctor mentioned, uh, usually uh, we must also think about uh, chlamydia trachomatis, especially in infants. And then uh, for preschool age, uh, such as streptococcus pneumoniae, um, 
hemophilia uh, hemophilus influenza and also staph aureus and then for school age mycoplasma pneumonia and also chlamydia usually uh, which is which are the atypical cause so that is for the etiology and then uh, three investigations that i would do uh, first of all i think it is important for us to um, to check for his um, his uh, sputum and then do sputum culture uh, and sensitivity and then um, next is full blood count uh, to look at the uh, white cell especially to look at the white cell counts uh, to differentiate between bacterial and also um, viral causes which is look at the neutrophils and also lymphocytes which are, which one is predominant and then um, next is since patient have high grade fever so I want to rule out um, bacteremia so I would like to do blood culture and sensitivity So it is very important for us to remember again and again uh, the bedside test for most of the respiratory cases include Aslan. Yes, doctor. The bedside so test. For the bedside test, I will check a uh, pulse oximetry. Okay. What else? Okay. Um, then uh, sputum culture and uh, sensitivity, and then um, um what else? <laughs> <laughs> Who can add? Okay. I used it to tell you take care about bedside tests. Number one, he said this is the pulse oximeter. Okay. What is number two? It is the same place. This is the radial artery. Why? To do blood gas. Because any organ you are examining, if you didn't put in your mind if this organ are failing or not, you will miss it. Respiratory failure, how many types do you know? Two types. Two, two types. types. All of you now can speak, but how two can types. we how can we rule it clinically or investigation wise? So number one, pulse oximeter. Number two is arterial blood gas, which is ideal. If not, we can try to interpret the capillary or venous. The last one is the same together, which is the big expiratory flow rate if the child is more than five years. Okay, so please, in each case, try to ask yourself before many times I'm speaking with you, what is the lab, what is the red, what is the bedside test, and at the end, what is the specific test for this case? Okay, continue, because we need to shift to the second case for tight time with Gumat, okay? Good. So, uh, next question, uh, eight-year-old boy presented with fever and cough for one week. Investigation revealed ra raised uh, white, bl uh, white blood cell. Chest X-ray was uh, performed. So, first one, uh, describe the chest X-ray finding. The second one is what is your provisional diagnosis, and the third one, uh, two complications that may arise from this condition. Okay. Anyone would like to try? Uh, hello, can you hear me? Uh, yes. So I would like to try to answer this question. So first, uh, describe the chest X-ray. Um, from the chest X-ray, we can see that uh, there's a opacity at the lower left lower zone with a perihilar perihilar haziness. 
And then there was no tracheal deviation or and the costoferin angle is also can be seen. Um, and then uh, pro, oh, my professional diagnosis, I think it is a pneumonia. And the two complications that may arise from this uh, condition, which is pneumonia, it, can, it could be pneumonia effusion, empyema, lung abscess, or it can also occur. Pleural effusion also can be can occur. Okay, uh, I would like to come back to the schist X-ray. If you find this cyst X-ray now with this pneumonia, you found the heart are very, very big, about two thirds or more of the cysts. What's your diagnosis? EOR. What is EOR? <laughs> Tetralogy of Peladon. Sorry. <laughs> No, uh, uh, before he has normal X-ray. You are waiting for eight years to diagnose the trilogy of Fallot. Okay, no issue. He has normal chest X-ray before, but he got pneumonia, and then we find the heart are very big. What can be the diagnosis? Uh, it is very important. Viral myocarditis. It occurs sometimes as a complication of viral. We know that it is viral and it is the most common cause, but sometimes it is accompanied by viral myocarditis, which you will find the heart known as Doctor, man, left man. Internet, go ahead. Ah, doctor, down left. Okay, I sorry, I am trying to avoid the using the mobile because I'm in call. No issue. If they call me, I will inter I will interrupt it also because the, the hospital. Internet is not so keen. Uh, did you understand my point now? Very, very important not to forget that the heart and the lung looks like uh, two organs together can be sometimes represented by the same issue. Can we come to the next, Oski? Uh, okay. So the next question. Uh, chest X-ray was taken in a two-month-old infant presented with respiratory distress, preceded with mild uh, upper respiratory tract infection symptoms and low-grade fever. So based on this X-ray, describe your finding. What is your provisional diagnosis and two complications that may arise from this condition? Okay, anyone would like to try to answer this question? Uh, I would like to try. Uh, okay, so... Uh, a, describe your finding based on this chest x-ray. We can see uh, it is a chest x-ray of a child uh, with hyperinflated lung 
uh, it is him that uh, the reads are Latin and and okay I think and I I think that's all and for provisional dynasties uh, usually for hyperinflated lung we suspected would be bronchiolitis bronchiolitis in children for the two complications that might arise from bronchiolitis uh the child might be uh, get a secondary infection uh, or uh, or can uh, persist to respiratory failure such as uh, amnia what are the common complication the common complication will be usually uh, the the common complication for bronchitis will be aspiration pneumonia or secondary uh, and it uh, and it might uh, that's the secondary infection and it can, also, it can occur but the most common the, the most common bronchitis uh, is it is it respiratory failure doctor Yes, respiratory failure, we said it, it, it can occur either type 1 or type 2, but it's very common to find him dehydrated. Why? Uh, the common finding? You, it is commonly to find him dehydrated. Can you tell me why oh. he became dehydrated? Uh, I think because... Um, because the respiratory distress uh, cause uh, okay, yeah. uh, is, it, is it cause reduced reduce Yes. If someone is distressed, he cannot go normal for his food or for his uh, breast feed. And at the same time, he has tachypnea, which make him also lose a lot of humidified and like that with the pacing. So all this can settle him with some degree of dehydration. So take care, please. At this point, we must assess the dehydration state of the child, okay? Which is very important. Okay, thank okay. you, Dr. Welcome. Okay, so we proceed to the last question for the first case. So a five-year-old girl went to a general practitioner and diagnosed as community acquired pneumonia and discharged with antibiotic. However, after completing the antibiotic, the symptoms do not resolve. So the first question, uh, what are the criteria of hospital admission? And uh, can you uh, discuss uh, what is in the uh, inpatient management? Anyone would like to try? Or, uh, Shah, can you answer? Uh, hold on. Hello, uh, can I try? One turn. Okay, uh, uh, yes. Okay, uh, so first question, uh, what are the criteria for an hospital admission for, for these five year old girls? So, uh, first, I think uh, it's uh, for uh, children age uh, three months and below, uh, and then uh, in, uh, the patient has uh, fever, uh, uh, high grade fever or non uh, non fever, and then uh, poor feeding, uh, poor feeding or oral intake, and then uh, if the patient has any uh, fast breathing uh, with cyanosis or uh, without uh, cyanosis, and then any systemic other manifestation. Uh, that uh, is uh, alarming. And then uh, if this, this patient antibiotic therapy or uh, in case of recurrent pneumonia. Uh, and then for second question, uh, for infection management. So first, we need to monitor the vital signs of the patient, uh, uh, especially the respiratory rate. Uh, and then uh, we need to monitor uh, if there's any signs of uh, respiratory distress, as mentioned earlier, start from the nose, like uh, nasal flaring, grunting, uh, cyanosis, intercostal session, 
and then uh, we can start discussion on antibiotic uh, uh, augmenting and then we should give uh, other supportive therapy like uh, fluid uh, oxygen mass for oxygen uh, therapy what's your comment to the one who did uh, the OSCE? can i see your answers What is this? Is it the answer? Um, me, Dr. Alia. No, the answer for the last question. Uh, plus, uh... Can you come back to the question itself? It is five years old. What is the answer of this one? Uh, you mean uh, the second question in patient management? No, no, the five oh. year. You said the children aged three months and the, and the below. Ah, uh, this is. Oh, also uh, the first one is just a, a general indication for uh, an, at uh, any age which um, presented with a. Uh, Pneumonia, but uh, severe pneumonia or unresolved pneumonia. So these are the criteria for hospital admission. I see. Uh, so uh, it, it is very important for us to, to do two important things in our practice. Soon you are going to start your uh, practice. It is, uh, what is the criteria for admission and the criteria for discharge? And the third point, what is the discharge plan for every patient? Okay, is it clear? Criteria for admission, criteria for discharge, and the most important is the plan upon discharge. Uh, number two, if you come to this, uh, to the question side, we'll, we, we must comment about the very important, the choosing of antibiotics, especially if the child finished before. Can you come back with the question itself? Uh, what is the antibiotic was given before? Uh, I think uh, amoxicillin. Uh, so at that moment, we must suspect, we must do investigation to rule out other organisms, but we must suspect atypical because this is the school age or preschool age. Usually, if not responsive within 48 hours to 72 hours to amoxicillin, we must suspect the atypical one. So I think I am going to go for the second line. If you open your also pediatric protocol, you'll find the first line, which is amoxicillin or amoxicillin clavulinic acid. Second line, it, it will be a kephalosporin, either second or third, according to the severity plus macrolides, okay? So it is very important to consider that. The last comment before closing the session of this case, no one of you touched the issue of asthma and viral induced asthma, especially if this patient has uh, some wheezes. We must take care about that and we must be able to discuss the asthma and what is the criteria for diagnosis of asthma and what is the asthma predictive index and how is the guideline for asthma, okay, for upgrading or downgrading our care. It is very important to please, okay? Good, uh, let's go now for uh, the second case, which we hope at 12.30, inshallah, we are going to stop our session for Gumaat.
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, uh, for second case, I will be the doctor while Farah Hida will be the uh, parents of the children. Okay, children, Farah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I will be the I will I will be the parents. I mean the mother. Okay. So, um, I'll just wait for you soon. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, may I know your name, Miss? Mrs. Uh, Miss Amira. Miss Amira. So, um, what is this uh, child name? Uh, his name is Ahmed. Ahmed. So, Ahmed, uh, may I know his age? Uh, he's nine year old. Nine year old. Yes. So may I know um why did uh, you send him to today? Uh, actually, he's been vomiting for five days already. So I was quite worried about his condition. Um, since since when? Five days ago, is it? Uh, yes, he he been vomiting for five days. Is it sudden or gradual? Uh. Uh, it was uh, sad. Uh, I would say uh, the first time he vomit uh, after he had his meal, uh, to like two hours after he had his meal. But uh, more recent, like two days ago, uh, even though he uh, eat a, a little food, he vomit right away. So just that answer question. Yeah. Um. I will. I will want to know. Does it have anything to do with eating? I mean, um, uh, what if the child does not eat anything? Does the child still having vomiting? Uh, he actually he can't really eat, uh, because he say he do not have uh, any appetite to eat. Um, but I I think uh he he has no problem in eating because uh if it's had uh, he if he has the appetite he can eat the porridge. Mm. Okay. Um, if the child does not eat anything, does the child still have vomiting? Uh, yes. Because uh, even oh sorry sorry. Uh, even uh, after like uh, like I say like a few hours after eating, he still vomit. Okay, I see. So, um, does, uh, is it projectile or not? Uh, projectile? Uh, I, I think it's not, I'm not sure. Sorry, doctor. It's okay. <laughs> um, so, how much does the uh, child vomit? Uh, uh, initially, he only vomit once, like, uh, like twice, uh, in the like starting on the first day, but uh, recently he, he vomit uh, until uh, like five times per day, quite a lot also. Now five times per day? Mm, like one day before, like yesterday. Okay, I see. So, um, and then uh, how much does the child vomiting uh, per vomiter? Uh, uh, it's it's quite a lot. I think I think it's around like one one bowl or one how do you call it one glass. Okay, so may I know the content of the vomiting? Mm, uh, it come out food, and then uh, a little bit what uh, watery mm. food content. I would say food content depends on what he eat. I see. So food content, uh, is it um, 
have digested or not? Mm, uh, but uh, the one he vomit right after uh, have been digested yet, yeah, but uh, but uh, some of it or uh, already digested. I see. Okay. So so basically, it is food particles, ah. Okay. Mm, yeah. So does it contain blood? Oh no, no blood. Um, how about greenish content? Uh, greenish. Uh, I didn't notice any greenish. Uh, because he don't eat uh vegetable also. But, uh, I don't oh. know. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, how about uh fecal materials? Fecal material. Oh, you mean like feces, doctor? Yes. Uh, I I the I didn't notice any fecal material. Okay. And then, does it um, if that uh, is it associated with uh, motion, such as uh, fun fair riding or boat riding? No, he did not have that problem. So um, previously also, patient does not have motion sickness, is it? Um, no, it's okay. So, is this the first presentation? The vomiting? Yes, the vomiting. Mm, yes, you can see that. <laughs> okay, so first presentation and then since five year, five, five days ago lah. Mm, yeah. Okay. And then does the patient take any drug? Uh, any medication, any medication? Uh, no, he didn't, uh, he didn't take any medication. Before the vomiting, also does not take any medication. But actually, uh, he had fever, uh, like prior the vomiting, okay, uh, okay. like uh, two weeks prior the vomiting, he had a uh, fever. Uh, we I we did uh, go to the clinic and then given paracetamol. I, but I think that's all. Okay, so. Um, let me finish the uh, vomiting first. So, does the patient take, does the child take any outside food? Mm. Uh, we did go to a restaurant, like, uh, but it's a usual restaurant. Uh, uh, and the rest of the family did not have any problem. Oh. Like. So, um, history of eating outside is before the vomiting started. Is it? Mm, yes. Uh, how this before? Uh, it is, I would say, uh, around two, like, uh, quite, quite, uh, already two weeks before, before the moment. Oh, already yeah. two weeks before. Okay, I see. Yes. So that's the last time uh, the child eating outside, uh, eating outside lah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, does it associated with diarrhea? Uh, he had uh, diarrhea, but only once, like only two one. days. Uh, two days before what? Uh, two days before I come here. Oh, okay. So uh, just uh, once. Hmm. Just once. Okay. So how much does the patient um have the diarrhea? Uh, the patient uh had how much uh. Uh, I think it's quite a lot because uh, he uh quite long in the toilet. But uh, how how we say how much? Um, how frequent is it? How frequent? Uh, uh, it is only for one day. Uh, and then frequent. Uh, uh he went uh back and forth. We say like. Uh, like five times, four to five times to the toilet. I accompany him to the toilet. Is, I'm sorry. Uh, is it five times? Yes. Okay, five times during that uh, particular day, lah. Is it? Yes. Okay, so five times during just that one day. Yes. Okay, so sorry, there 
sila ikuwi. Does the fish, does the patient, does the child can uh, take orally, tolerate orally? No, he can type. He, he can type. He lost appetite. So the, the child uh, has trouble eating orally. Lah. Then, um, does the child feel thirsty? Does the child feel Okay, does the child feel, feel thirst all the time? Uh, he, uh, he, do, he does seem dehydrated, but uh, he thirsty, I would say yes, because he do feel thirsty, but you know, when he want to drink, he feel he has the nausea and then want to perform it. Oh, okay. So, um, does the child uh, cry? Mm, no. uh, during the vomiting, yes, he, he sometimes cry. Okay, uh, how about like, the tears? The tears? Yeah, the tears. There's tears, doctor. I'm sorry? There's tears. There's tears, okay. Um, how about the urine of the child? The urine, uh, the urine, uh, I noticed the child have, uh, he said he had uh, painful urination uh, during, uh, like, uh, before the vomiting started, but I do not remember uh, uh, when, but he said uh, it was painful urination. Okay, um, how about the volume of the urine? The volume was okay, I would say. Um, how about the concentration of the urine? Concentration, uh, a little and bit. Color. The color is, uh, the color is quite like uh, darker, darker in color than usual. Okay. So um, then um, you mentioned that um. The child, okay, sorry, sorry. So uh, uh, how about the dietary habit of the patient? Uh, he eats well, but when he started uh, the symptom, uh, I mean, the, he started to be sick, he, he uh, cannot really eat. Um, okay, um, usually, uh, how, what is the frequency of the child? Uh, he quit. He eat quite a lot. Like uh, in one day he had breakfast, like uh, even nasi lemak, and then uh, in the evening uh, he will eat again nasi, and then also uh, at evening some snack, and then at night, hmm, I would say previously uh, he eat well. Okay. How about now? How about uh? uh now it's quite. Day? Uh, it's quite hard because uh, he probably only eat like only twice a day that uh, we try to um, uh, make him eat like porridge. Okay. Um, does the child have any uh, food allergy? No. And then um, does the child con consume any milk? Consume any milk? Mm. Concerning milk, mm, right now, no. Uh, he already stopped drinking milk. Oh, okay. So, when was the last time he drank milk? Uh, I would say one year, like uh, since he's one year old. Oh, okay, I see. So, since uh, one year old, so, and then he does not consume any milk un until now. Is it? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Um, so you did mention about uh, fever, right? Two yeah. weeks ago. Mm -mm. 
So, um, how about the fever? Can you tell me more about the fever? The fever, uh, uh, yeah, it only lasts for around two days. But, okay. uh, but I would say, the, actually, uh, I want to tell you, doctor, the fever, he also, during at the time uh, of the fever, he also had uh, rashes uh, all yes. over his body. So, uh, but the rashes already dissolved. I mean, uh, only for around five days. At the same with, at the same time with the fever, uh, and okay. then mm, two weeks prior the vomiting started. Okay, so um, I noted that uh the child has fever, but let us finish. Uh, it also has rest, but let us finish about the fever first. So you mentioned the duration is two days, right? And then the child have given paracetamol. So does it resolve with paracetamol? Yes. I would say it is all hit by And then, um, do you know what is the temperature during that time? Ah, uh, sorry, I don't remember. Oh, so uh, but I would say quite high. About what? Uh, about thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty. I I think it's thirty. I would say around thirty-nine. Oh, around 39, okay. And then, so the fever already resolved. Lah. So um, during that fever, does the child um, have any, um, any cough? No, no cough. Uh, so it's right? Mm, I don't think I need to. Um, any runny nose or sneezing? Runny nose, no. Um, <laughs> no runny during, nose. Okay, during that time, uh, does the patient have any diarrhea and vomiting also? No. Okay. During that time, not yet. All right. So about the rashes, um, you mentioned it uh, is five days, right? No. Mm. Does the patient have any sick contact? Uh, actually, uh, uh, at his uh, school, uh, there's also other, an, another classmate who had the same rashes. But, uh, so, um, is it completely resolved now? For the for the uh, for Ahmad, yes, we no longer have the ration. I see. Okay. But the ration already like been crushed. Okay. So, uh, did you uh, remember what type of rash was that? Two to three minutes. <laughs> the rash uh, was red, and yeah. then uh, there was. Uh, Say. Yeah. Two to three minutes. Okay, okay doctor. Note that. <laughs> Okay, what the rash was red. The rash was red. Uh, there was redness, and then also, uh, there was also. Uh, I would say it much um, uh, that that uh, rash, and then uh, it come out clear fluid, and then and then start to become crust like after on the fifth day. Okay. Um. Does the child take any medication for the rashes or any um topical med uh, medication? Uh, we give, we give uh, him lotion and then like uh, and like frequent uh, uh, bathing. Mm. Okay, so no any um, not taken any uh, antibiotics and antiviral? No, we didn't we didn't give because we expect okay, uh, well, and uh, because we see the rash gone, so he become healthy. So. Okay, okay, I see. Okay, now uh, does the patient have any headache? Uh, yes, he do complain of headache. Like, very, he say very painful, the headache. Very painful. Um, hmm. What is the pain score of the headache? Um, the pain score, uh, uh, I say very painful, you see. 
uh, have the eye. Uh, we say uh, sometimes you cannot sleep at night. Lah. Oh. And then, um, so the headache uh, started when? The headache, um, they during the same, uh, after like, uh, after the vomit, yeah, which is four days. Okay, I see, okay. So, um, mm. and then uh, how about any neck stiffness? Neck stiffness? Yes. Uh, neck stiffness? Or pain at uh, the neck? Mm, he didn't complete, really complain of that stiffness, but he did complain like uh, he cannot really help uh, like when light, uh, you know, he, he cannot really open his eyes when there's like uh, very bright light. Oh, I see. Okay. So, uh, does the child have any weakness? No, he uh, he did not complain weakness, but he complained very fatigue due to very a lot of vomiting. Okay, so does it, oh, the child also have uh, fatigue and lethargy, yeah. Sorry. And then, uh, <laughs> so the child have fatigue and lethargy. Yes. Okay, so does the pet child have any numbness? Numbness? He didn't complain. He didn't complain any numbness. Um, did you, does the child uh, have any seizure? No, no seizure. Uh, um, does the child have any facial asymmetry? Uh, no, no facial asymmetry that I noticed. Okay, does the child uh, can walk normally? No, he did not have the, he cannot really walk. He didn't have the energy to walk. Oh, okay. Due to lethargy, is it? Yes. Or is it uh, have, the, okay, the child does not have weakness, right? Okay, uh, how about uh, talking? Does the child can talk normally or if there is any slurred speech? Mm. Mm. He, he do... I didn't notice. Okay. So, uh, how about um, does the child any have any loss of weight? Yes, we do have loss of weight. I would say around four kg. Around four kg. So, mm -hmm. what is the child weight right now? Uh, previously he was uh for uh for uh. 45, now he's 40 kg. Okay, uh, that is uh, for 5 days, is it? For kg loss for 5 days? Uh, no, actually we did not notice uh, when the, he lost the weight but uh, we did try to wait him like uh, recently. Uh, he lost, he already lost uh, the, five, uh, the 5 kg. Okay, so 45 kg, when was the last time, What? Uh, when was it uh, the child weigh 45 kg? I would say uh, around one to two weeks ago. Okay. And then if, uh, if the child, is the child have any trauma to the head? No, no trauma. So, um, does the child have any uh, uh, previously hospitalized? No. And any known medical illness? No, he did not. Uh, he was healthy previously. Okay, this is the uh, first hospitalization, okay. is it? Okay, Zain. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, so... Yeah. Zain? Yes? Can yes, you summarize now? I'm sorry. You are now very... <laughs> Can you summarize? You summarize now, please. Oh, okay. Um, so this patient, um, Ahmad, a, 90, a nine year old boy, a Malay boy, presented uh, with 
five days of vomiting. Um, and also have photophobia, photophobia and also headache. And upon um, uh, upon uh, further uh, history taking, the mother also complained of previous history of fever and also rashes uh, two weeks prior vomiting. So that is the summary. So my provisional diagnosis is um, varicella zoster meningitis um, because the rash could be due to previous uh, chicken pox or varicella zoster infection. And the patient also presented with uh, symptoms of uh, meningitis such as um, vomiting and severe headache uh, with and um, so for my differential diagnosis is acute gastroenteritis uh, food poisoning food allergy um, lactose intolerance but the patient does not uh, take any milk and then uh, any obstructive causes such as a pyloric stenosis, but um, the, the child is already 11 years old, so less likely. And then tumor of the GIT, but then again, the patient is only nine years old, so it is quite young to have tumor of the GIT. And then other neurological causes, I'm um, thinking about uh, space occupying, occupying lesions such as brain abscess uh, and also brain tumor. But then again, uh, for brain abscess, the patient does not have any fever right now. And then um, other meningitis uh, such as bacterial causes, uh, but I would like to confirm it with CSF analysis and also blood culture and also other meningitis such as poliovirus and mumps but um, I didn't uh, have the time to ask about uh, vaccination history. So that's all for provisional diagnosis and also differential diagnosis. If you look the CSF, what you will find? I'm sorry, doctor? If you do a lumbar puncture, what is the finding of CSF? Uh, for viral meningitis, is it? Okay, so for viral meningitis, okay. first of all, for the appearance, um, the appearance would be clear, and then there will be elevated, um, elevated uh, white cell count, especially lymphocytes. And then the, no, uh, the glucose uh, could be normal. And then for protein, usually it is elevated in viral meningitis. So how can you differentiate between uh, meningitis and the encephalitis? Hmm. I'm not sure, doctor. <laughs> Who can answer? Mm -hmm. Yes, Aslan. I'm sorry, what's the question again? The difference between uh, meningitis and encephalitis. Uh, how can we differentiate between meningitis and encephalitis? Basically, from the history, I think we can ask if there is uncontrollable cry, changes in... Um, mental status, it, um, changes in behavior, for example, more to suggest you from encephalitis. So according to the history, what's, uh, what's your diagnosis now? Your patient has photophobia. Yes. So is that the sign of encephalitis? <laughs> so a very celestial encephalitis. Yes. Yes. 
Yes, you must suspect that which is very important. Okay. From the clinical signs, any behavioral or any photophobia, uh, changing behavior, all this is a clue for encephalitis. Okay. Okay, doctor. Uh, it will occur with viral. So you must suspect is it uh, uh, viral meningoencephalitis or not, which is very important. What, uh, what is the management here? If you suspect it is the Ricella zoster meningoencephalitis. Because sometimes the Ricella zoster can change just with acute ataxia cerebralitis, and it looks benign. But if it looks like signs of meningoencephalitis, how can you treat it? Okay, we are asking you for help. Uh, I think the the management is uh, supportive management. So, for uh, if there is any fever, we uh, give antibiotics. Um, And I'm not. I'm not. I'm not really sure, doctor. Well, yeah. If if you don't know, said don't know in medicine, you must be very clear. Uh, who can answer? City is a tool. You you have focus for that. Uh, what's the question again? What is uh, the treatment of? Varicella zoster encephalitis or meningoencephalitis? Maybe the first thing is to secure the ABC, the airway breathing and circulation, and then um, give antiviral. Yes, so it is very important at this situation if you have a mixed picture of meningoencephalitis. You are going to start by the third generation cephalosporin and acyclovir. Okay? Until you confirm the final diagnosis and the culture of the. Uh, an important uh, point here uh, how can you rule out CNS problem? Zaid? Like. Yes, uh, increase intracerebral pressure. Uh, what was the question again, doctor? ICB. Oh, uh, intracerebral. The, so the question was yes. how to exclude uh, increase in ICP, is it? Okay, so um, the answer yes. is... How can you diagnose and treat? Um, first of all, um, uh, symptoms. Uh, so for symptoms, usually have um, a really painful headache, uh, and and then the patient will also have a projectile vomiting, and then other than that, um, I think is it Cushing triad for Cushing triad for increased ICP? Is it? Hey, you just answer. Are you asking okay. me? <laughs> Okay, so uh, <laughs> and then uh, for Cushing's triad, so there will be increase in um, blood pressure, uh, but have uh, bradycardia and also um, bradypnea. So that is for um, Cushing's triad. And then after that, um, we must do CT scan to confirm there is uh, no. Um, Space occupy lesion in the brain. Uh, any, any other uh, diagnostic issue in your hand? More, yeah, we are waiting for the CT as they tell you it's tomorrow. Endoscopy? Yes, fundoscopy are very important to looking for. Papilledema.
more than the criteria for diagnosis of this intracerebral pressure is the ability. Okay, so just fantascopy can tell you if there is increased intracranial pressure until you confirm by the CT. Can you hear me? Yes, doctor. Hello? Yes, I uh, can it's hear. very important to know. It's very important to know what is So, uh, Doctor cakap tadi kena buat uh, kena buat fundoscopy for yes. papillary edema. Okay. You must revise the Sorry, Doctor, we cannot hear you. Doctor? Aku dengar you must revise the Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yes. Now. I need for you to prepare an important slide about the red flag or flag signs of increased intracerebral pressure. You mustn't miss it. When is the type of the pain? When it will appear? What is the relation with walking? What is the relation with eating, it was vomiting, okay, any diplopia, any, all this, and don't forget the papillary edema checkup. It is in your hand and be easy to be done by simple uh, fundoscopy, okay? Uh, also, don't forget the other problem in the body, which can be UTI. UTI in a childhood can be precipitated by vomiting. Also, otitis media. I know that it usually occurs and earlier than that, but you must rule it in case of vomiting. Okay. Uh, vomiting is an is a very wide important sign. She can indicate even surgical causes. You must put it closed one. I would like to rule out surgical causes. It may be we have intestinal obstruction, we have another problem like that, okay? Can we proceed for the OSCE, please? Okay, can you hear me? Okay, so we proceed with the OSCE. So first question. Next. Okay, so question one. Okay, first, state the causative organism of meningitis in unit. Baby with one to three months old and baby more than three months old. And then list the virus that can cause the meningitis in the pediatric age group. And what uh, vaccine available for those organisms that cause meningitis? 
So please list some of it. So anyone would like to, to answer the question? Uh, hello, I would like to try. Okay. okay, so for the first one, what are the causative organism of meningitis according to age? So for neonate, which is less than one month old, uh, the organism could be uh, group B streptococcus and E. coli. For baby uh, age one to three months old, uh, the uh, organism could include uh, DBS, E. coli, uh, Haemophilus influenza, and streptococcus pneumoniae. Um, and for baby more than three months old, uh, the causative organism could be streptococcus pneumonia, uh, Haemophilus influenza, and ne uh, Neisseria meningitidis. So for the second question, uh, what is a virus that can cause menin meningitis? So it can include uh, enterovirus such as Coxsackie virus, uh, mumps, uh, herpes simplex virus, uh, herpes zoster, HIV, measles, and influenza virus. Okay. Uh, so the last question is, uh, what are the vaccine available? Mm. <clears throat> so uh, we have first one, a meningococcal virus. Uh, vaccine which is for Neisseria meningitis and then Haemophilus influenza type B vaccine and then the last one is a uh, pneumococcal vaccine for streptococcus pneumonia. Okay, I think that's all. Okay, so let's see the question, the answer. Okay, so, so this is the causative organism according to the age. So all of it uh, has been mentioned by Alia. Okay, next. So the virus, uh, it could, there are a lot of virus that can also cause meningitis, like enterovirus, mum, HSV, herpes, zoster, uh, HIV, measles, and also influenza. And the vaccine, uh, uh, another vaccine that we can add, the additional vaccine like uh, very solid zoster vaccine. This one is a, an additional one. Okay, next, next question. Okay, so question two. Give three symptoms of suggestive of meningitis. And then uh, what three signs of meningitis that could be found in physical examination and how to confirm the meningitis? So who would like to answer this question? Uh, may I answer this question? Okay. Okay. Uh, for symptoms of suggestive of meningitis, uh, we use uh, fever uh, and uh, neck stiffness and uh, altered mental status. That's for symptoms. And for sign in physical examination, uh, Koenig and Brodzinski. Koenig, for we raise the leg uh, and elicit pain. And Brodzinski, we uh, lift the head and the leg of the patient will try to tries uh, to reduce pain and uh, bulging fontanel in infants probably to, to increase ICP. There's three signs and is there any uh, demonstration? Is there any demonstration of the Kernix and the Brudzinski or not? Uh, and the what can hear if not in if not in your risk you need to add Uh, you need to put the meningeal irritation sign as uh, a picture in, in your OSCE. Oh, so. Um, after that, no issue. You will complete it after that. Okay, continue. Okay. Uh, how to confirm meningitis? Uh, we confirm by doing lab puncture. Uh, we to sit with the differentiate between viral or um, bacterial meningitis by the protein count which is increased in uh, protein count which increase in vi viral uh, in bacterial and uh, to presence of neutrophils in bacterial meningitis and lymphocytes for viral meningitis uh, that's all okay uh, right. Okay. So that's just the answer. Okay. So uh, what has has answered is 
through. So the classic triad for the meningitis, uh, it has a fever, knuckle rigidity or neck stiffness and altered mental status. However, in children, usually uh, they can also present it with a non-specific uh, non specific sign and symptom first. Uh, it could uh, it could be like flu-like illness such as fever, headache, lethargy, irritability, nausea and vomiting and uh, and the pediatric age group also can present it with diarrhea, abdominal pain or sore throat. And then later uh, when the disease progress, so it can it, it will be more specific like uh, neck stiffness uh, and they also can have a non-blanching rash um, malted skin and also uh, if it is severe it uh, can lead to seizure paralysis and also uh, go to shock and then for physical examination that suggests the meningitis uh, we can do the manager irritation test uh, I've, I'm, I'm sorry uh, uh, because I forget to put the picture or or on how to do a Kernick sign and Brzezinski sign. Basically, a uh, Kernick sign, <clears throat> uh, when we, um, uh, the patient will, will feel a pain and have a resistance when we do passively knee extension with the hip fully flexed. And then for the Brzezinski sign, okay, uh, the, when we uh, try to bend the head forward, the knee and the hip will be flexed automatically. Okay. And then uh, other sign on physical examination that we could find is a non-blanching rash. Non-blanching rash. Uh, it indicates a meningococcal disease. Usually the rash will be purpuric or PTK. And then in the infant, we must check the fontanel. So it might be bulging, uh, indicate a increased ICP. Okay. So for the confirmation uh, diagnosis, Test for meningitis is a gold standard to do a lumbar puncture. And later, next question, we will uh, discuss what the result of the lumbar puncture. Okay, next question. Okay, so question three. Uh, a three-year-old boy child presented with a fever, photophobia and seizure. He was planned for lumbar puncture procedure. So what are the contraindications of performing lumbar puncture? And then explain the CFS result. Uh, for those situations, uh, which is uh, acute bacterial meningitis, viral or aseptic meningitis, TB meningitis, and fungal meningitis. Okay, uh, anyone would like to answer? Um, I would like to answer for the question. So, um, for the contraindication of performing lumbar puncture, first, uh, we need to uh, patient with increased intracranial pressure uh, with uh, symptom like uh, vomiting, uh, headache, uh, change in uh, vision, uh, change in vision, uh, uh, cannot do, uh, must be ruled out first before doing lumbar puncture. So it is contraindicated. Uh, and then uh, bleeding tendency uh, also need to be uh, contraindicated for lumbar puncture. Those with uh, local infection at the site of lumbar puncture uh, also to uh, contraindication of lumbar puncture and those with hypertensive encephalopathy. Uh, and then for the CSF result, um, uh, for bacteria, usually it is a uh, turbid in color with uh, increase in white blood cell count and protein, but reduced in glucose. For viral, as mentioned uh, previously, it is clear with uh, normal glucose but high in protein and white cell count. For uh, TB, uh, usually it is opaque in color uh, with increased white cell count, especially in post site, uh, and reduced in glucose. Uh, however, uh, protein increase. For fungal, uh, usually it is cloudy with increased. Um, white cell count and protein, but the glucose can be low or uh, reduced. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's see the answer. Okay, so uh, the contraindication of the lumbar puncture. First, uh, we must check the patient either they have a sign and symptom of the increased lung, increased ICP. Uh, such as altered consciousness, abnormal posture, 
uh, when they have a focal neurological sign and abnormal pupil, pupil reflex. And other than that, check that uh, the patient hemodynamically stable or not. And then when the GCS is less than 8, it's also contraindicated. And when there is a history of seizure, we must check that uh, when the seizure occurs. So because we cannot do immediately after a seizure occur, and then uh, check the bleeding tendency. Either the patient have a, any bleeding tendency, and then check for the skin infection at the site of the lumbar puncture, and it is also contraindicated to do lumbar puncture in the patient with the hypertensive encephalopathy. Okay, next. Okay, so for the CFS CSF result, okay, as main as stated here, in acute bacterial meningitis, they appear usually cloudy and turbid, and they have an increase in the leukocyte and also protein. Uh, usually the leukocyte count is very high, and then the glucose is low. And then other confirmation tests or specific tests that we could do to confirm the acute bacterial meningitis, we also can do CSF, Grim stain and culture, and send for CSF bacterial antigen. And then for viral or aseptic meningitis, the appearance will be clear, and then have increase in the leukocyte, predominantly lymphocyte, and then slightly uh, increase in the protein. However, the glucose is normal. And then we can send specifically for PCR, uh, CSF PCR for virus. And then for tuberculosis, tuberculosis meningitis, the appearance will be opaque and the leukocyte will be increased. Uh, at early stage, uh, the uh, polymorphic neutrophy will be uh, predominant and then later it will be lymphocyte. And then protein will be increased, however, the glucose decrease. Uh, for specific investigation, we can send for smear for AFB and then send for gene expert MTB test uh, will be positive in the CFS. And then for fungal meningitis, um, the appearance could be clear or cloudy and then increase in the lymphocyte count, increase in protein. However, the glucose will be normal or low. So the usual um, causes organism of fungal meningitis usually cryptococcal. So we send for CSF for cryptococcal antigen. And then we also send for HIV test usually because fungal meningitis usually occur in the immunocompromised patient. Okay, next. Okay, for the fourth question, okay, uh, one year old, five month, one year, five month old child presented with a fever and convulsion. Uh, so the lumbar puncture was done. The CFS result, uh, investigation show protein. Uh, T glucose 2.0 millimole per liter, white cell count 500 millimeter cube. Okay, so give diagnosis and three common organism and state a three long term sequelae of this uh, condition. So I would like to try. So uh, based on this, the protein is high, the glucose is low, and the white cell count is high with. Uh, more towards polymorphonuclear cells. So I think this is uh, bacterial meningitis. I think this is bacterial meningitis. And the causative organism could be meningococcus, such as Neisseria meningitis, ataupun or pneumococcus, such as tract pneumonia, and influenza. Okay. And state the three long-term sequelae. The complication that could happen, uh, the patient may develop cerebral palsy. Uh, the patient may also develop epilepsy or having developmental problems, uh, having sensory neural deafness or, uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, next. Okay, so the diagnosis for this uh, condition is a pyogenic meningitis. Uh, can be either uh, so the organism uh, could be caused by pneumococcal influenza and also meningococcal then for the complication of the meningitis we can uh, uh, 
the patient can develop acute complication like sepsis, septic shock, disseminated intravascular coagulation, coma, and also seizure. And other complications usually uh, uh, in bacterial meningitis survival. So they could have sensory neural, sensory neural deafness, hydrocephalus, uh, CP, epilepsy, and also uh, behavioral problems. Okay. Okay, so uh, based on this table, you can see either it is a normal viral or bacterial meningitis and validate your answer. And then as, uh, for this condition, assume that the patient is a six month old. Okay, would like to answer? Yes, Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum.